It is so important to prepare yourself before you travel to a new country from the small stuff to the big stuff. So I'm glad you're here because I'm going to give you 31 things that you should know before you come to Argentina, broken down into seven different categories. The basics, language, Buenos Aires, money, food and drink, business and shopping, and travel. I have a lot to say, so let's get into it. Argentina has two types of plugs, C and I. Plug C is the two round pegs, like in Europe, and plug I has the three flat pins and a triangle. Argentina uses a 220V supply voltage and 50 hertz. Some apartments have the C plug, some apartments have the I plug, some apartments have both, and it's impossible to know. So come prepared with both sets of plugs or bring a travel adapter. Retornable envase. Before you go buy a beer or a wine, bring the previous bottle that you had before and exchange it. You can only exchange for the same sizes, one liter, one liter. It doesn't matter the brand, but you can also only trade within the same drink, beer for beer, wine for wine. You'll know if a particular bottle is retornable because it will say on the label. When you go to the store, look for the retornable or envase sign. They'll give you a ticket, then you go buy your drink, bring it to the counter, pay, give them the ticket, and you'll get the discount. People. Argentinians tend to be very friendly and they're famous for the gift of gab. You can talk to an Argentinian person about anything. Porteños, the people from Buenos Aires, tend to have a very bad reputation for being arrogant. I haven't exactly found that to be true, but it exists nonetheless. But in every region I've been in Argentina, everyone is so friendly, so nice, and they're very open. Websites. If you don't speak Spanish, you might be tempted to use the English translation function on Google, but if you do that, it doesn't work. Some numbers will be spelled out instead of written like a number, and you can't always click things. I suggest using the translate function in English just to read and get the information. Refresh, go back to the original Spanish, and then click anything, submit documents, because generally the sites only work in Spanish. It's always good to learn at least a few phrases before you go to a new country. And if you already speak Spanish, well, you might be surprised to find that the Spanish in Argentina is a little bit different than what you learned in school growing up. Instead of tú or usted for you, they use vos. Vos has a different conjugation. Basically, you take the infinitive minus the R, add an S and an accent, and there you have it. So tú tienes or usted tiene turns into vos tenés. Tú vienes, usted viene turns into Vos venís. It's the same with the imperative. The accent changes to the very last vowel. So instead of escúchame, you have escúchame. Instead of ven, you have vení. As far as pronunciation goes, they change the double L and the Y to sh. In the north, it's more j. So pollo becomes pollo in Buenos Aires and pollo in the north. Pollo, pollo, pollo. You should definitely come prepared with a translation app. I'm usually fine with Google Translate. My friend Jenny recommends Deep L. She says is the best. Check the link in the description for my blog. I've listed a few phrases for you to get started. Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is not the Paris of South America. Buenos Aires is Buenos Aires. Paris is Paris. There may be some similarities, like in one particular area, there's some old buildings with green rusted roofs that resemble Paris in some way. Cafe culture, even though their cafe cultures are entirely different. Come to Buenos Aires with the expectation of seeing Buenos Aires and not expecting to find Paris. Buenos Aires deserves your time. I've heard so many people say, oh, I'm coming to Buenos Aires to base myself for a couple days and then I'm gonna see the rest of the country. No, don't do that. Buenos Aires is huge and it has so much to offer. Every neighborhood is different and unique. It needs, I think, at least minimum a week. It's a city full of parks, cafes, theaters, nightclubs, restaurants, everything, including a ton of free things to do. And don't just stay in the city limits. Head to the suburbs, go to San Isidro, go to Tigre, go to La Plata. Transportation. The city is incredibly walkable, so you'll have no problem walking wherever you need to, although it is a massive city, so walking from one end to the other might take several hours. Luckily for us, the transportation is fantastic. You can take the bus, the subte, or the train system, all with the same SUBE card. Just buy a card, load money onto it, and you're good to go. The downside, there's no train to the Ezeiza airport, so you'll need to take a taxi or city bus number eight for that. However, there are several taxi apps like Cabify, Didi, or BA Taxi, including Uber, dogs, and dog walkers. There are dogs all over the city, many of them off-leash, 
I haven't really seen any stray dogs. People just don't always leash their dogs. And the best part, the dog walkers, especially in the neighborhoods like Recoleta or Belgrano, you'll see a ton of dog walkers everywhere. As someone who doesn't come from a big city, seeing dog walkers with like 20 dogs surrounding them is an amazing sight to see every single time. Safety. People love to talk about how unsafe or dangerous Buenos Aires is, and it's just not true. It's a big city, just like any other city. Be smart, don't flash around jewelry or your cell phone while you're walking down the street, but it's just as safe or dangerous as any other big city in the world. Money in Argentina. Argentina has two exchange rates, the official red and the unofficial blue. The red is usually around one USD to 120, 130 pesos. The blue unofficial lately has been around two 80 to 90 it even went up to 322 last month to one dollar click on this video here if you want to see more in detail about how money works in Argentina Western Union not in my entire life had I ever used Western Union until I came to Argentina this is the best and safest way to get the blue rate download the app create an account then just transfer yourself money from your home bank account to Western Union and you can go to any branch in the city to pick it up just bring your passport and the MCTN number cash Argentina is all about that cash because of the inflation rate. Don't use your credit card in Argentina, you'll get charged the red amount. Don't take money out of ATMs, you'll get charged the red amount. Transfer yourself money, use cash. When you use cash, you'll be doubling or even now almost tripling your money. It can be difficult knowing how much cash to carry with you. Like what is too much? What is too little? What if I get robbed? Or what if I wanna buy a shirt or go to lunch and I don't have enough money? So finding the right balance of how much cash to carry is a little tricky, but you can do it. No prices, two prices and quotas. In Argentina, so many stores don't have prices listed. Why? It's so annoying. But one of the reasons is because there are different prices if you pay with cash or if you pay with card. You just have to ask. It is very annoying to have to ask how much something costs every single time and sometimes I just don't buy things because I don't feel like asking how much every item costs. You'll also see signs for quotas everywhere. That's basically an installment program. If you're Argentinian and you have a local card, you can pay in installments, sometimes with interest, sometimes without. Exact change. In Argentina, because cash is king, they are so particular about cash. Exact change. Sometimes you'll even get things for cheaper if you don't have exact change. For example, if your vegetables cost 350 pesos and you only have 340 or 360, they'll give it to you for 340. You'll get a discount of 10 pesos because they don't want to give you change. And sometimes when you do pay with exact change, they say thank you and they're appreciative of receiving exact change. Tipping. This is not a tipping culture like it is in the United States. At restaurants or places where you're served food, tipping 10% is common. It is not common to tip your taxi driver, your nail stylist, your hair cutter, any other service. Restaurants only 10%. Food and drink in Argentina. Meals and meal times. In Argentina, there are four meals. Breakfast, lunch, merienda, and dinner. For breakfast, a lot of Argentinians will have café con leche and media lunas, or mate, usually something simple. Lunch is generally eaten a bit later than we eat it in North America, around two o'clock. And generally, it's a more full meal, something warm like rice and meat or pasta, Whereas in the States, you know, a sandwich is fine. Merienda happens around 6 to 7 p.m. It's usually something smaller, empanadas, medialunas. You'll notice that in a lot of restaurants, the merienda and breakfast menu is the same. So the foods that they eat at those times are very similar. Dinner is the hardest one for me. It's around 9, 30, 10, even 10, 30. This is the hardest thing for me to adjust to in Argentina. I hate eating so late. My boyfriend makes dinner at the moment I want to be going to bed. So what to eat in Argentina? Because Argentina is a melting pot of cultures, especially with Spanish and Italian influences, this is reflected in their cuisine. You can find pizza and pasta anywhere. Of course, one of the most well-known foods is the empanada. Argentina is also famous for its high quality meat. So try to find yourself a parisha restaurant and have a very delicious and very affordable steak. Don't forget to add chimichurri or salsa criolla on top. Also try a provoleta and for dessert, doce de leche or an alfajor. And when you order nachos in Argentina, don't expect them to actually come with cheese. It's just a bowl of chips. If you want nachos, like we think of nachos in North America, you have to ask for nachos con cheddar, nachos with cheddar. Restaurants. In Argentina, it's very rare to have a hostess at the front of the restaurant. When you come to a restaurant, just walk in and sit down. Argentinian waiters are also not annoying like they are in North America and they won't be asking you every five 
five minutes how everything is and if you need anything else. If you need something, ask them. They're not gonna come to you. They're also not going to drop the bill when they think you're finished with your meal. You have to ask for it. They won't kick you out like they will in North America. Condiments. I recently found out that it's actually illegal to put salt on the table. I was always wondering like, where's the salt? Because I like to put salt on food, but you have to ask for it specifically because it is illegal to put it on the table without asking. Ferneti coca. This is something you'll see everywhere, especially in Cordoba. Fernet is a drink that originally comes from Italy, but in Argentina, the Fernet and Coca-Cola became super famous and the Cordobans say that it originated there. Water. I always get mixed comments about this. Some people say, don't drink the tap water. Some people say, do drink the tap water. Some people say the tap water is fine. It just tastes bad. Ultimately, what I do is buy a seven liter water bottle and just drink out of that all week. But when I've run out of that water, I do just drink from the tap. I've never been sick, it's fine. But in restaurants, don't expect to be offered water. It's something you have to pay for. Businesses and shopping in Argentina. Opening times. Don't expect to get anything done on a Sunday. Everything is closed. The streets are dead. Also, don't expect restaurants or shops to adhere to the hours that are posted on their signs or on Google. If they want to open 30 minutes late, they're gonna. They don't actually follow those times. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't close for siesta. You honestly never know. In Argentina, shop owners do what they want. Mercado Libre. Don't come to Argentina expecting you're gonna order things on Amazon. Amazon doesn't work here. Instead, there's something called Mercado Libre, which is the South American version of Amazon. However, as a foreigner without a DNI, we can't use it. So if there is something you wanna buy in Mercado Libre, ask an Argentinian friend, they'll buy it and then pay them cash. WhatsApp. WhatsApp is used for everything in Argentina. Most businesses will have their WhatsApp number posted so you can contact them to make appointments on WhatsApp. You'll get your PCR results on WhatsApp. You'll book your nail appointment on WhatsApp. You can book accommodations or order sushi. It's actually super convenient and this is one of the things I love about Argentina. Travel in Argentina. I'll be honest, traveling in Argentina is not always easy. There's so many things we can't do online, like bus schedules are impossible to find. And if you do find them, you can't book them online because you don't want to pay the credit card and you don't have a DNI. So many things require a DNI and as foreigners we're excluded from that. Several times I've tried looking online finding bus schedules from city to city and it's really hard finding them on any Argentinian websites. I've had better luck finding schedules on places like BusBud and you can't buy them online anyway. So the best thing to do is go directly to the station, go look at the schedules on each company's window, see the one you want and buy directly from the company at the window at the physical bus station. This this is totally inconvenient, but it's the best way to go. Airplane travel. The best places to find domestic flights are from Flybondi or JetSmart. Use your credit card if you feel comfortable. If not, there's also the option on those websites to use RapiPago, which is where you'll get the number from your receipt, and then you go to a RapiPago physical location in the city and pay them in cash. So this is one way to get around using your credit cards to buy flights. I don't know why, but so many streets in Buenos Aires and Argentina in general don't have street signs. You'll be looking around the corner and you can't find anything. If they are there, they're listed on the side of the building, not on an actual sign, but so many times you just can't figure out what street you're on. And in traffic, cars have the right of way. So if you're walking, be cautious. And on streets that are off the main avenues on four-way stops, there's no stoplight and a lot of times there's no stop sign, which makes things super confusing. As a pedestrian, this is really confusing because you never know when to go. And when you're in a car, it's really confusing because there's always pedestrians just popping out in the middle of the street. To confuse things even a little bit more, Google Maps sucks in Argentina. The little indicator is always pointing the opposite direction. So you never really know where you are or which direction you're going. I really hope these tips have been helpful to you. And if they have, I would appreciate so much if you give me a like down below, subscribe if you wanna see more videos about Argentina. And if you've watched until this point, it probably means that you're interested in coming to Argentina or at least Buenos Aires. So click on this link up here. In this video, I'll explain how money in Argentina works, the two different rates, and how you can get the best exchange rate and get the most out of your money, sometimes doubling or tripling your money in Argentina. Why not?